the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to heal the contract of heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. With the Lord there is mercy, Fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy, fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice in my supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revealed. With the Lord there is mercy. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. But with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. The Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. And after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something? so that this man would not have died. So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come up. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bags, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen what he had what he had done me, done and began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading gives us great hope. It introduces to us a theme in our readings today. Jesus brings life into our death. He brings hope into despair. When we have the Spirit of Christ within us, we are given life. With the coming passion and death of Jesus, he wanted to give his disciples this clear example that with all things, or that with God, all things are possible. That with God, there is never truly a hopeless situation. He wanted them to witness again that he truly is the Lord of life, the one sent to fulfill the prophecy we heard in today's first reading from Ezekiel, that God would open your graves and bring you up from your graves, breathing life into our dead bones. The Jews believed that a person's soul sort of hovered around the body for three days after death. So for Jesus to bring Lazarus back to life on the fourth day, it was him bringing him back to life. And everyone knew that he was really dead. He was a dead dead. And so it was this even greater manifestation of God's power. So we have Lazarus who is truly dead beyond the possibility of coming back to life. And just earlier, from where we picked up in our first reading, we also have Ezekiel who has these dry bones, and those will come back to life as well. So this reminds us that the resurrection of the body is not this mere concept, but it's a reality, and it's a, real, a personal reality, one that we will experience, one that we can hold on to with hope. But what we see here is that it's, it's something that the Lord wants us to be able to experience in the depth of our heart as well. And so in this time, especially in this time of, of struggle, we want to continue to lean into these truths, these truths that there is a resurrection of the body, and that the Lord wants us to be able to experience this life, because in that way we're able to experience this deeper renewal of our faith. But on a deeper level, it speaks to our heart as well. When we experience some sort of a wound or a death within our heart, many times we give up on that place, thinking that this in our life or in our heart that's going to be dead forever. And no life can ever come back to that place. But what we see in our scriptures today is that God wants to bring life into those areas as well. That place of experiencing isolation or rejection. That place of shame where we feel that we will never experience love again. Where we can never experience forgiveness in that place of our heart. These are the places of dry bones. Or of true death that we have within our hearts, and it's into those places that Jesus wants to bring new life. So often what can happen is we get stuck thinking that this is what I was meant for. I was just meant 
for this experience of suffering, this experience of death, and this is all that I have in my life. But we're meant for more. We're meant to be fully alive, to be able to be completely given over to Christ so that we can experience the resurrected life even in our day-to-day -day lives. That we can experience this healing deep within our hearts and be brought back into wholeness. So the question for us today is how can I experience that? How can I lean into this new life? How do I open up my heart to the Spirit of Christ so that the Spirit can move within me? The first and the most obvious way is through the sacraments. We have the sacrament of baptism, which is where we're first given that initial life. And we have that spirit and that, that light and that fire of the divine life entrusted to us to be kept alive, to be kept well within our hearts. And that's further fortified by the sacrament of confirmation. But we know through our own weakness and through the experiences that we have in life, that we fall short. And that's where we have this wonderful sacrament of confession as well. And it's in the sacrament of confession that not only do we experience God's mercy and forgiveness, but we're also made new. It's like our soul comes out clean as if we had just been baptized. I think sometimes the temptation is we walk out of the confessional thinking that somehow those same sins are still clinging to us, but they don't. And so it allows us to experience that divine life within us. Especially in these days of quarantine, our parish has confession that's available and many parishes around us do as well. So I encourage you to continue to seek that sacrament out if it's something that you need. Especially in this time of, of uncertainty, it's this time that we start to think a little bit more of our own frail human life, and maybe even of the end of time. And it's this opportunity for us to make sure that we're getting right in our relationship with God. So this might be a beautiful time for you to seek out that sacrament. Reconciliation. And the last sacrament that really helps us to experience this life within our hearts is the Eucharist. And it's that thing that we're longing for so much right now that so many of us miss the most about our experience in our life of faith is that we're no longer receiving that intimate communion in the Eucharist at the sacrifice of the Mass. My prayer is that we can continue to have this longing for the Eucharist, that it continues to be this hunger that we have for the Lord, even when we're able to return and enjoy a celebration, when we're once again able to fully participate in the Mass, that we'll always have that hungry and thirsting for righteousness. But even in the absence of sacraments, we can still receive this divine life through our life of prayer. And an important thing that we recognize in the Scriptures today is that Jesus goes to Lazarus, and God is present for reason feel as He goes to those dry bones. God is present to us, and He comes to those graves in our hearts where we've experienced some sort of death. And while our natural tendency will be to close off that tomb through distraction or numbing, we want to recognize that it's life itself that is coming to us, and we want to open up our hearts to that life. So as we spend that time in prayer, when we start to experience that pain or that discomfort, maybe painful memories begin to surface in our mind. What do we do? We want to acknowledge it, to recognize that these are things that are coming up in my heart and in my life. These are things that are dead within me that I want to give over to the Lord. We give it over to God. And we can say just a simple prayer like, Come, Lord Jesus, as we interiorly open the tomb of our heart to Him. Sometimes we're able to engage a little bit more. Sometimes that simple prayer is all that we can do in those times because those memories are so painful. But if we can, we can engage God even more in a spontaneous prayer. Saying, Lord, I give this over to you. Lord, I know that you can heal me, that you can bring life and fruitfulness into this area. Though I don't know how. Be with me, Lord. Be present to me. Help me to stay close to you. Heal me. Heal my heart. Heal my mind and my memories. In this way, we're engaging the Lord in those places of death within our hearts. We're inviting that divine life to come within us, to allow that spirit to come and to bring this new life and this fruitfulness into our hearts. As Pope Francis pointed out in that blessing, he said the temptation can be to think that the Lord does not care. Brothers and sisters, we see the love that he has for us, that he does indeed care for us, and that our own pain and our own sorrow that we experience in our life is something that grieves the Lord. We see this especially in the Gospel today, when the Gospel says, And Jesus wept. 
When we have experienced pain or sorrow or trauma and death within our lives and within our hearts and within our souls, Jesus wept. He wept for us. He weeps for our, our hearts, for those places of death. But he can also bring us new life. So when we are able to stay and to be present to God in our own interior graveyard, we, are open, we open ourselves not only to his healing, but also we can begin to encounter this peace and tenderness there that the Lord wants us to experience. And in doing that, brothers and sisters, we allow new and resurrected life to come into our graves.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of his glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what in your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.